Welcome to Inside the Hype TV podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Umberto Bon Cristiano. In this podcast, we talk about the teachings of the most successful society in natural history, the honeybees. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner, an advanced beekeeper, or just curious about honeybees. Here, you'll find great conversations to educate and entertain yourself about this wonderful insect. From honeybee biology to how to make money with honeybees, you won't miss anything here. In today's podcast, I want to talk about the career of a great friend of mine that accepted my invitation to build this podcast with me, Dr. Malcolm Samford. And I hope you enjoy it. Dr. Samford, welcome <laughs> to the show. I'm so glad that you accept my invitation. And I'm, I think the people at home also will be very happy that you you and I, we're going to build this podcast together. And in today's podcast, I want to focus the conversation about your career because you is, you are a guy that have a lot of stories to talk about bees. Tell me, tell me a little bit about your career, a little overview. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, basically, I, I got into beekeeping kind of by accident. I, I was at the University of Georgia. And I was in geography, Latin American geography. I was in, I've always been interested in Latin America. And uh, I actually speak Spanish because I was in the Peace Corps. So I, I have a, a relationship with Latin America in that sense. And so I, in my master's thesis in geography, that's where I was a geographer, I uh, went down to Yucatan Peninsula. And my idea at that time was to look at the fishing industry in Yucatan and get a guy kind of give an idea. My father had, during the Second World War, he was a shrimp fisherman, so I was always been interested in that area. And when I got down there, I found out, well, you know, uh, there's not much information about fishing, but but in Yucatan at that time, there was a huge beekeeping organization, interest industry. There were cooperatives. There's a guy by the name of Harvey Wilson who was exporting all kinds of honey into the United States. And so it was a really exciting time. And so at that point, I just completely switched from... Uh, fishing to beekeeping. <laughs> wow. I didn't know much about it, but but at that point I, I, I switched because I had taken a course just before I left from Al Dietz at the University of Georgia on bees. So I knew a little bit about it to start with and it just kind of fit fit what I did. So I did my thesis, my, my ge geographic thesis on the uh, geography of the beekeeping in Yucatan at that, at that moment. There was a lot of interesting stuff going on there. And so when I came back, it's been like, like, what, what the hell did you do? You switched? I said, yeah, I switched. Not only did I switch that, I switched out of geography into entomology. <laughs> so you know, it's kind of a strange These are great miracle. The miracles the honeybee can do. We, we, yeah, I think that, that's right. Once, that's right. Yeah. Once they touch you, they did some, you know, there is some. Yeah, you know, that's right. That's uh, fantastic, you know. So, so I, I did, so that I, I signed up with Al Dietz. Became his uh, lab technician. We did a lot of research together, and I graduated with a PhD in ent in, in uh, entomology with a specialty in honeybees, honeybee biology. And uh, then Al Dietz left for a while. He left, and he left me in charge of being a professor at the University wow. of Georgia. <laughs> so I was a professor there for a while, and then I got a, a offer to be a extension specialist in apiculture at uh, the Ohio State University in Ken Columbus, Ohio. So I left there and went, uh, uh, I was invited by a real lead guy, Walter Rothenbuehler, a very famous guy in, in bee uh, genetics. And uh, he, he, he and I got together and we, we did some projects and so on about a year and a half when I was there at Ohio State. All of a sudden I got a phone call from Florida. Wow. And I said, well, hey, would you be interested in coming down to Florida? And uh, well, I sure might be. I you know, I, you know, I, it's Florida's closer to Latin America and other places where I was involved and in tropics and whatever. So I went down to Florida and, uh, you know, fortunately they, they hired me as extension specialist in beekeeping at the University of Florida. So I was there for 20 years as a, as a specialist in, the, in that area. And, um, and now I've retired, of course, been retired since then, but, but still doing bee stuff. And, uh, so that, that, but basically my, what I really did during my career was become an international guy. 
nobody in beekeeping really went around around the world to look at beekeeping. They were doing stuff in the United States. That's how a lot of people in the United States are pretty, you know, United States centric, concentric people. Yeah, they're, gonna, they're not going to travel. Well, I said, I'm traveling. <laughs> so I traveled. The first thing I went to all these Lapamundia meetings. First one I went to was in Acapulco, Mexico in the 1980s. And then I traveled around and I did two sabbaticals during my career. Uh, one to Italy in 1989, and the other one in, two, in France, 1997. And, uh, and then, meanwhile, I was also invited to all kinds of international events and so on and so forth. Okay. And out of that came a book. It's called uh, like Beekeeping Without Borders. Let me uh, show it. Show, here we go. Yeah, it's a European book, basically. And uh, it's, it's published, uh, in, and uh, it basically talks about uh, at, at this, as as the European Union was formulate, forming at that point, um, lots of things were going on, and this book talks about beekeeping as part of that that effort. So I was really happy to be able to do that, and uh, that's what's very very important. Yeah. That's exactly the reason why I I thought that I invite you because you're the perfect guy that to to build this podcast with me. Uh, the same way like you. Uh, the bees took me everywhere in the world, and I could see a lot of different things and different ways to keep bees and different cultures. Yeah. I think it's so rich, the stories you have to tell, that I think it's going to be amazing. We can build this podcast together. Yeah, I think I, I agree with you. The more I think about it, the more it's going on. And I got all kinds of ideas. I got a new idea today, Umberto. Right. Uh, a guy doing a podcast uh, about uh, uh, artificial intelligence. We have a list. Is, is, people, have, people at home doesn't know yet, but we have a we have a gigantic list of topics to talk that's about. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Right. But what's happened with this particular in 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 the, in the chat bot, the chat bot, which is artificial intelligence? You basically put about four or five words in there, and the chat bot comes and talks to you about all kinds of stuff. Yeah, we might be able to do that. I don't know. That's kind of oh, I I did a little test, and I think the artificial intelligence intelligent is not very good beekeeper yet. So we're gonna talk about. Oh well, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> My first of all, after that, you know, yeah. what other places in all, in the world do you visit bees, and what's the different? What's the what the place that was m more different for you regarding beekeeping? Yeah, I'm not sure exactly because again, it was we're all about the European honeybee. Yeah. If I'd have gone to, I was I was in Egypt for a while and they did a little bit of talk, interesting talk, kind of a pro project there. Uh, and but uh, that yeah, it's all about really about the European beekeeping. The interesting thing about Italy, of course, I mean uh, by Egypt, of course, is they don't have any European bees except the beers bees they brought out of Europe. <laughs> So their native bee, their native bee is a very small, very uh, 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 not a very defensive organism that they can hardly use. So they're using the European bee. You know, they're using the European bee in in Italy. I mean, in uh, Egypt for their beekeeping. Yeah. So that's kind of what's also happening. That the the bee depends on what's going on. You know, in the United States, when we talked about that video that we we did some time back about the idea that the uh, in in the United States, the the settlers that went west were preceded by the honeybee, and in fact, the Aboriginal people called it, you know, the white man's fly. Yeah, you know, the white. <laughs> and of course, the honey, when they realized that, you got a problem, you know, because after the white man, I mean, after the fly comes the white man. You better be ready. You know, that's what happened there in that particular situation. So yeah. <laughs> Professor, tell me about your website and your book, your beekeeping book. Okay. Uh, well, I, I was uh, invited to uh, by my story, S T O R E Y, story publications, to write a an update to a, a, a bee book, a couple of bee books that they had on, on online, and uh, so that I was able to develop what's called Stories Guide. There it is here, Stories Guide to Keeping Honeybees, and uh, it's uh, it's fortunately it's a very a uh, good book, and it's it takes it's it's also I is I got a co-author on who unfortunately is deceased. He was deceased before I got this, this particular job to do this book. But I'm, I'm using his name because he I mean, his ideas are part of it as well. And so uh, Dick Bonney is his name, Richard Bonney. And so basically, I developed this book according to the story. They they are a large beekeeping outfit that I mean not not the beekeeping, a large animal science outfit. 
they're looking at you know chickens and ducks and whatever and there's they're publishing books and they're selling those to people who are interested in that and of course there's the b book they didn't have one but they got one now <laughs> that's go. my book published in two, now in second edition 2018 so I'm yeah. really happy about that. Yeah, I made a, I made a full video about your book, and people can watch in my channel. There is a friend right. video dedicated to his book. I think it's very great. It's a great book for beginners. Not only for beginners. It's it's a very interesting book. You, I, it's hard for me to define if it's for a beginner or there is all kind of things there. Advanced, beginning, everything combined. Well, that's beekeeping for you. You just never know exactly what, what's going to happen when you're doing things, you know. That's true. Everything becomes a surprise, you know, kind of. Thing, that's you know? true. But how about your website? I think your website is phenomenal. So much information there. How people yeah. can find it and what is that about? Yeah, that's uh, that's something I, I, I can sure to... I, since I wrote a, a newsletter for many, many years, I was able to take out of that newsletter various kinds of blocks of information and I stuck it into this the website, which is about modern management of beekeeping. You know, beekeeping uh, is now different than it was when I started. I started in the 1980s, and beekeeping was, uh, you know, it uh, was a, a very uh, hands-off uh, kind of uh, activity. You could push bees out in your backyard somewhere. You never had to worry about them. <laughs> you could go out and collect honey on occasion. That was it, you know. But in the 80s, no, you now you after the 80s, a lot of things happened at beekeeping and now it has completely transformed. And we we talked about that in 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 our in that video that I did with you. And when was that? It's a couple of years yeah, ago. Yeah, we, we made a well, for people yeah. at home that doesn't know what we're talking about. We made a video about the history of beekeeping. Uh, we we give a little overview about the historical aspect of beekeeping. I'm gonna leave a link of everything that we're talking about here in the description of this video. In the notes in the podcast if you're just listening you can go to your podcast and there is the notes there you can find the links and information about everything we're talking about here but yes we had we had a video in my channel dedicated to historical aspects of beekeeping and we talk a little bit about that yeah i'm really excited about that video because it was was completely non-rehearsed came right out of nowhere oh yeah really we good people have seen it have loved it yeah. They love, yeah, yeah, that's that's what we are here. We have no scripts. Yeah, we have no script here. We, we are saying. real. We're real, and we just spit it out, whatever we That's saying. right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, professor, so we're going to do it. So I want to I wanna thank you and say officially now, welcome to the show. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate it so much. Yeah, I mean, I... Again, I don't know anything about podcasts, but I'll learn. I'm a, I, I like to learn stuff about it. We'll see. I like the idea of you and I together talking because I think we have a pretty good relationship with each other. Yeah, and uh, and we have different generations of beekeepers, and you're you're from Brazil, and I've been to Brazil, and you know, I mean, it's, it's so it's a it's a, I think it's a nice uh, partnership. It's going to be a, a great yeah. great compliment. I think a very good podcast is in different episodes going to come from this. And we're going to have fun, right? Oh, I said allow so, so because that, that's the other thing. I won't be around very long. You got to be careful. I do know what happens to me. I you know I literally have I literally have colleagues that have died. Come <laughs> on. In the last couple of years. Oh, yeah. Like what? The guys that I like here at Muscle out of California. I was in fact involved in and perhaps uh, going to have his job. He got that job instead of me in California. Okay. Yeah. He died. He a very, very, very recent. Roger Hooper got out of Michigan. He also died. So yeah, it's. Uh, you know, I I know your type. We're gonna be talking about that, and then we're gonna keep doing this for more twenty years. I mean, you're gonna be a hundred years, and we're gonna be <laughs> here talking about bees, <laughs> celebrating our one hundred year anniversary. Well, yeah, that's great. Yeah, here yeah. we go, <laughs> Professor. One more time, thank you very much. I think it's gonna be fun, and for you guys at home listening or watching the video. Feel free to contact us, us and ask us for episodes. Whatever you want to hear, we'll be happy to make videos or podcast episodes about it. Yeah, I like the idea that I, I'm sort of the story guy and you're you're the scientific backup. So what, all the stuff you're doing is it's about the science of bees and so on. Yeah. And I guess I'm the guy who say, you know, wait, wait a minute, maybe that works, maybe it doesn't. <laughs> well, I know. 
<laughs> that's the good part. We're gonna we're gonna check each other out. You know, you tell a story. I'm gonna ask. Are you sure about that, Professor? <laughs> <laughs> Inside the Hive.tv podcast is brought to you by our fans on Patreon. On Patreon, you can access all episodes before anybody else and exclusive content like behind the scenes videos, live streams, and more. If you want to learn more about honeybees and help me to make more content about honeybees to everybody, please visit patreon.com/insidethehive.tv and join our community.